very much. You guys, John, Brandon, David, it's so good to see. Now I get the real dirt behind season three yeah, of the Orville. Yeah, now you get the dirt. You can ask us <laughs> some real in-depth questions. Yeah, well, I actually wrote some stuff down. It's not my usual style, but hey, let's wow. go ahead and, 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 and start it off. Uh, John, now you are a seasoned director of Edge of Your Seat serial action dramas and given us some of the greatest episodes of the Orville yet. I mean, really kind of given us all the episodes now uh, <laughs> uh, in one way or another. Uh, knowing your job as well as you do, what was it like to return to set after the lockdown? I mean, everything had to change, I'm guessing. How did you adapt to the new normal? Well, that's, that's actually a great question because it, it did and it didn't. I mean, you know, we... we there, there was all these sort of ideas of how we we're going to do it. And, 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 you know, the, the guys have said it before too, that we didn't really change the way we shoot the show. We were safe. We did all the safety things, but a lot of like, if you saw a lot of shows that came out of that, that era of when people first came back, you know, nobody was beside each other mm -hmm. and, you know, they were just doing stuff that was just different. Yeah. And right from the beginning, Seth was like, look, we're going to come back. We're going to be as safe as we can be. We tested more than any other show, I think. We tested all every day and weekends, so everyone was tested all the time. Yeah, you guys were and, in like uh, a testing purgatory every day. Yeah, and but Seth was like, "No, we still make the same show." And of course, it was a way more ambitious, you know, undertaking than it was the, the second season. So we, you know, we had, you know, as David has said, that rock to push up the hill. You know, the fact that we had to deal with all the COVID, and and it was, I got to tell you, people forget it was scary. It was scary leaving your house. It was scary going going to work with 150 people and and you know you, your whole life was based on this little mask on your face mm -hmm. and and you know at that time a shield too we also had the shields before they realized they weren't doing anything so it, it was uh it was interesting and and i guess the the best thing that came out of it was the fact that the cast and crew if they weren't gelled already we were all gelled together just trying to keep each other alive so i think that was uh that was the plus out of the whole thing but it it sure didn't hamper what we did, what we did physically and, and, you know, what the show looks like. And, uh, and that's the best part. Well, from the episodes I've seen, wow. I mean, this is a huge step up. This is like when you watch your, your favorite series and then they get their first movie. I yeah. mean, it's, it's that much of a jump. And I, yeah, it's like when they get their first 10 movies, cause that's what just happened. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It, uh, during the episodes, you know, even what, you know, kind of get to that 45 minute mark. I'm like, Oh, it feels like it's going to be over. It's the end's coming up. And I look, no, there's tons of time left for, to, to, to continue the mission uh, within that episode, which is, which was, you know, put a smile on my face, something I thought about while watching. Uh, Brandon, I have, something I really want to know <laughs> from you. The Orville is far from being your first uh, sci-fi rodeo. Very far from it. I mean, you are you are a sci-fi guru, just like John is a, a girl guru. Uh, what sets the Orville apart from your previous works and what sets New Horizons apart from the previous two seasons of the Orville? Well, um the Seth MacFarlane of it all, first and foremost, and that um, we're all fans of of science fiction and Star Trek and all the different kinds of science fiction that is out there. Uh, but what Seth did was create a more naturalistic cast of characters. And the dynamic is quite different. Um, it's more like you and me. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the humor, the character humor, comes from that. And so immediately um, you feel that difference from the very first episode. But Seth's dictum was, was story first always. So when we break out these stories, we're not breaking comedies, we're, we're, we're breaking what the story is. Now in episode three, it's a little more, it's a little funnier, a little more of a, a romp. Episode one is dead serious at times. And that's what the show does so well. And what I think um, that breadth of tone was, is different than Star Trek for me, having written so many episodes. Um, we, we couldn't take it on that, that, the spectrum wasn't that broad. And I think that that makes the Orville very original, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Well, episode three, uh, 
is now my absolute favorite episode of the Orville the, of, of all, and you know, but I got some more to check out eventually. Oh man, we'll, you are we'll in for it. <laughs> <laughs> it truly is that those, those two episodes are the tip of the iceberg and that's yeah. not exaggerating. In any <laughs> way. They really truly are the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Episode three is the type of, of sci-fi that, that, uh, that made me fall in love with sci-fi when I was five years old, just those things that are, you know, uh, uh, challenging, you know, what reality is, uh, very Twilight Zone-esque for me, which has always been my favorite type of sci-fi. So uh, I've, I just have to say, I very much love that episode. Yeah, uh, for right. me, it was, it was the stories like If the Stars Should Appear, Mad Idolatry, uh, of course, Identity Saga was incredible. Uh, but last, even when you get simple, more human, lasting impressions, that's the thing that really endears me to this series is just reminding us what it is to be human in these grandiose situations. Well, you you have a, the people making the show are are no different than you, and that we're we're also science fiction fans and yeah. fans of those kinds of stories. We're just and in a shows. really lucky, lucky position to be doing it. That's, well, I have uh, I want to get to David here because David is is my is my orville guide the the, the <laughs> stories that you, that you can tell here uh david not only having written some amazing episodes of the orville you've also penned all the episodes of the orville comics uh, is right. there is there a difference in writing for the live series and the graphic novel series uh well there is a difference in that uh it's just me writing the comics uh which is probably good and bad but i uh <laughs> i think uh, for the fans but for me I think uh, writing the comics, I was a big, I'm a big comic book uh, geek and I wanted um, the feeling that I never got out of my uh, Star Trek comics, which is I wanted the Orville comics to feel like uh, episodes. And yeah. so- And they um, tie I'm episodes trying... together. What's that, say again? They tie episodes together in a lot I, of I wanted also to fill in some of the blanks between the seasons that there were there were questions that we we that I got to answer in the comics that if you're a true hardcore Orville fan and you're going to read the comic, there's going to be something in there for you, but also that there's going to be a story that's going to feel like an episode, but it never, uh, but I would never, uh, uh, you know, the, the stories that we that we do on the show are obviously different that the comic book format is both limiting and expansive in different ways than the TV show. Yeah, with I mean the show is basic is is people coming together for the greater good to explore not only the universe but they explore themselves. So I mean, is there even really a difference between writing for the Orville or the Golden Girls? They're basically the same show. <laughs> Our visual effects are way better. Yeah, I think yeah. that you know you you're joking, but, but the, the secret of the Golden Girls and the secret of the Orville is the same, which is you care about the characters. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to laugh with our characters. You're going to cry with our characters. You're going to be interested in what happens with the characters. We do not talk down to the audience. We These characters are real to our fans, and we want uh, to make sure that we live up to that expectation, that we take these people seriously. What happens to them matters to us as much as it matters to the fans. We're, and, and I think that that would be the comparison I would make to the Golden Girls. Well, that's what I like to hear because no matter what, what you're writing for, taking it so seriously and, and, and trying to bring these people to life uh, is one thing that I just uh, definitely appreciate about the Orville. And I know that the, the other fans besides myself really appreciate it as well. Yeah. Um, before we have to wrap, I just want to know why you guys think uh, Orvillians and new fans alike should be watching New Horizons. Hmm. I think uh, it's the most cinematic show on, on TV. Yeah. I think it's going to, the production value, the visual effects, the performances, everything about it is, you've seen two episodes and I, John's not exaggerating. Holy cow, you have some stuff coming your way. It's going to knock your socks off. Uh, I cannot wait. Uh, I'm not even going to wear socks because why, <laughs> yeah, why waste a good pair of socks? <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> well it looks like it's time to wrap up so wrap up so i just want to thank you guys for letting me stop by and and ha and geek out a little bit i wish we had you know a few more days to to continue the conversation but 
you know, there's only so much time. We got to get ready for uh, New Horizons to come up. Um, we'll come unless... hang out with you. We'll come hang out with you once you have Whenever you want, Justin, just yeah. invite us. Follow we'll us up. There. All right, I'll send you an invite. We'll get some conversations going because I, I, I miss the geeky conversations. 